All right, I'm gonna take the intake off. Just gonna clean up some area. I'm gonna take the uh, the vent for the alternator off. All right, so just moving those over to the side. You got the EVAP plug down here, and uh, yeah, this is for the uh, traction control ACE, ACE, ASC. Look at that. It just feels so new. It's, I mean, we don't it's, know. He may have replaced some of the stuff in the engine bay. But. It's rubber. It's not like stiff. All right, so one, these the hoses on here on the throttle body are really on there and stuck. So what I've got is a, a little uh, pick here. And I'm going to do is just Give it a little WD-40 and bring it straight down. And, whew, man, that one got it off. All right, back to the throttle body. All right, if you look, the holes are technically just enough for it to go in there, so there is no adjustment in it. If it is, it's just minute here's the uh the new throttle body you can see the nice little dine-in in there uh, ah did i mention i love new bits i love new parts the dine-in is the dining throttle body is in now i'm just tightening it down securing it by hand okay closed is good open is what i'm All right, floor it. That looks really damn good right there. Okay, so we just did the adjustment on the uh, on the throttle body. So, uh, you know, you have the adjuster screw on the back on the throttle cable, and uh, we had to floor it, and we had to make sure that the uh, butterfly was at a 90 degree to the bore of the throttle body. And I got a second opinion, and we were on. So she is set. We do have a little bit of slack like we were supposed to when the throttle body is technically closed. So now we're just... Uh, finishing up the whole throttle body assembly, so we're adding the uh, traction control butterfly. And uh, I guess we're gonna be installing a different intake than an OEM one. Okay, so we're going to uh, get going with the intake now. So what we're gonna do is remove the horn, which is this one right here. So if you look, of course you have to this one, the one that's closer to the, uh, the structure here, the bumper, is uh, this is the one that's gotta be removed. Um, so I already have um, the items disconnected. So this one is gonna get relocated towards the bumper. So we'll just take it off for now. And, uh, and that's where my intake's gonna go. So I'll grab the pieces real quick. Okay, so this is what we've got. This is the bracket that technically will go right here. And then they uh, supplied a uh, dine-in, some rivets uh, to go in here so we could screw this down. But what makes it even better is this piece right here. Let's see what else. And this one just has to be located that way, so I'll grab my tool. All right, so I will. I heard that we might have to cut this off, so we'll have to cut that off to get the filter in there because it, it's gonna lean right on the actual rail itself. So we'll get that cut. Okay, so what I'm doing, instead of cutting the bracket off, I'm going to uh, drill out the, the spot welds without physically drilling through it. So I'm gonna start with this size bit and uh, do this side and then the next one. And then we should be able to pop it off in case down the road we ever wanna put it back on. Just to let you know, this is only 
about 36,000 miles on this bracket. We need to mount it on the wall as a memorabilia. Alright, so now I can just clean those up. How deep are those headlights? Yeah, this one does go deep. <laughs> Since we're kind of can let some paint dry. Hey guys, so uh, what we're doing is kind of a, a fitment. So we have the new headlights, uh, which the back housing is a little bit bigger. And we are trying to still install this, uh, the bracket that, go, that comes with the uh, Dynan intake. And when we first tried, it's actually hitting here. It won't let it go. So what we're trying to do is we installed it now and just to see if, if I could, which right now the headlight assembly is pushed all the way up. Now you have to be mindful when you're doing that, you still have the lower trim on the bottom that you have to massage it and make sure you got it right. And right now with it all the way up, I'm, I'm still hidden. As you can see it, it moves as I do it. So. Um, we may, as I try to push it in into its spot, you can see the headlight moves. So, so we are going to sit around the round table and uh, see what we could come up with to still try to utilize this um, and uh, still keep the headlight in place and still have the movement that we need. So. Uh, We'll, we will get back to you here shortly. We're going to end up uh, putting the, uh, the regular math back in. So here's a bracket that comes with a dynan and it goes on the driver's side and it just kind of slides right in there. All right, so what I've already done, I've already loosened these. So this is where it goes. Uh, um, we will have to replace that at one point, but two of them is better than, than one. Um, so I loosened these nuts here uh, just so I could loosen these right here. So now they're in, ready to be installed. So here is the, the vacuum for the intake boot. We will be eventually removing this section, but at this point, uh, she will go back in to make it look OEM for now. So there she is. That's pretty. All right, so that's in place. So technically I could go ahead and tighten these down here, which I'm going to do now. So I'm just holding the one that's torn a little bit, so that way there's less pressure on it when I tighten it. And now for the actual 10 millimeter nuts. So I'm using my other wrench just to keep it from spinning. Otherwise you rip it off. Not that that's what I did. It was already ripped when I started. All right, so now it feels good. Ah, yes. And just for fitment purposes. Uh, we don't need no stinking air filter. So if we just did, technically that's how she would go. The only thing that we are up in the air with is this piece because of due to the headlight. I tried to get Matt just to put the, uh, the stock ones back in, but uh, I think he just walked away. I, I take that as a no, not an option. So technically that one will just go right there. Okay, so trying to put it on, trying to take it off, put it on, put it off, trying to make everything fit nice and snug. So what we end up doing is we trimmed the boot down. Thank goodness it's nice and thin. And uh, she is straight, trust me. She is straight, it is a straight cut. Um, it, it looks good, so once we get it in, I'm able to bring it in more and uh, get it to fit much better in here. And I have more room all the way around because we were having an issue of the filter would hit 
this little section right here. So with it in that way, I'm able to uh, clean it up a tad bit and uh, get that filter in. So now I was gonna start uh, clamping these down and do the final screwing down. And uh, we've decided to not install the bracket. Well, not really we decided, it's just with the bracket there and these headlights, it's, um, it won't fit. So uh, we had to uh, delete it, so no problem. Okay, so we were back and forth and uh, got some advice and we were trying to keep everything without cutting it. But uh, what we found out is this is just a, uh, an adjuster rod. Um, and what we'll have to do is just cut this section off here to here. And uh, that's gonna give us the extra clearance on the filter itself. Um, Cause we're fighting this section right here uh, with the filter uh, going down and being right there in that area. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna trim it and uh, put it in its place cause we can't leave it open because you'll get condensation and water inside. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, break out my trusty tool or Matt's trusty, trusty tool and go cutting. Switch gears on different tools. There it is. And that was the whole uh, reason and key of um, doing it while it was on there because, uh, you know, now it's locked in, it's, it's in its locking tab. So I don't have to worry about trying to get by scripts or pliers and trying to jam it in there, but she's in there. So sweet. Let's see how much clearance we get now. Okay, so one of the things that we're having to do is the air piece for the brake duct. We had to trim that to get the filter to go in place. Um, so we have to trim it a little bit more. If we do not trim it, the way the filter fits in here is going to push the fender back and can't have that. So got to trim it a little bit here. I already did one cut and now all we do the second cut. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. <gasps> she is in. And I have clearance. Yes. All right. Um, there we go. So, and then that is raised all the way up. So that's in the center portions and you could see I could still move it and the intake is not moving at all so it's not rubbing it and uh, sweet we uh, we got her took a little bit of finesse and uh, she's in there so like um, like I stated earlier what we're gonna end up doing is we're not going to install that bracket right here um, it will not it will not clear um, this whole section and we don't mind cutting this piece off but we don't want to be cutting any of this stuff. Well, technically we can't, it's the housing. So, um, sorry, fender lining, sorry. Um, but it was for the greater of good. And so you could probably get different filters. Yes, um, now there's so many different options. Um, we, we could have got a smaller filter, skinnier filter. It could have been a cone, you know, wider up top and narrow down towards the bottom. But unfortunately, we really want to finish the car today. So this is one of the little things that uh, we already knew going into it. There was going to be a little bit of a cutting, a little bit of trimming. So uh, we were hoping it would be less, but unfortunately it was the opposite. It was a lot more than we anticipated. Uh, but we finally got it. Um, so now it's just a matter of technically just tighten the hose clamps in place and uh, this is done and um, we can start installing the, uh, uh, the front bumper and getting all these plugs and sensors intact. So, all right, so uh, we're gonna get to the headlight and finish installing that. Uh, here is a pigtail that we uh, got from M Sport Parts. Um, so no labeling, um, but uh, you know, it's kind of very easy to do. You try it one time and you figure out if it's gonna be high beam or low beam. We had to remove on the driver's side, the gray with the purple tracer. 
uh, the violet, sorry, not purple. Um, remove that and then the pin just goes in there and I just put electrical tape around it so it's completely covered. And then the same thing with the one on the passenger side is going to be uh, gray with a yellow tracer. And you do the same thing. So all you have to end up doing is got, it, it, there's a clip back here in the back. And let me see if I could just kind of pop it off with my fingernail without breaking it. Probably not, there we go. So this clips right there and it just kinds of put a little pick in here or a little flathead screwdriver and it pops out and then you're able to pull the pin out. Now this one on the driver side was easy to get, get off. The one on the passenger, uh, the one on the passenger side was a little bit more tougher, but uh, we still were able to get it out. So, um, and that's what you do. So now you just have your that one wire going to the um, side marker, and that's where it plugs into. And then now uh, we just push it in and twist and lock, and um, she should be good to go. So this. Uh, horn stays where it's at. This is the second one and then the the other one which technically went right here where the filter is located That's going to go down here bolted on towards the uh, um, Lower section of the uh, the bumper. So well You probably won't get to see that part, but that's where we're at